from Seattle, Washington. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube. On the ground at LinuxCon North America 2015. Now, here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Rick here. We are on the ground in Seattle, Washington at LinuxCon North America 2015. We want to come up here, get a little taste for what's going on. Really the granddaddy of them all in terms of enterprise open source projects. We're really excited to be joining this next epic by Maury Whalen, the VP and Director, Open Source Technology Center from Intel. Welcome. Thank you, Jeff. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. So people probably that don't aren't familiar with Intel's open source uh, kind of stance, might say, what is Intel doing in open source? I thought they're all about putting x86 uh, chips in computers. We do both. <laughs> <laughs> open source is extremely strategic to us when you have a whole community of people, and you know, Linux started in, what, 1991, and having grown up on um, Intel architecture, extremely fortunate there that we made some key right decisions with giving more documentation out and more availability to our hardware, right? I think one of the things that people really need to know about how strategic open source could work for them, right, is how it scales. So if you take, for example, I have a team that does a lot of Linux kernel CPU and chipset development. When we're pushing things up to the Linux kernel, it's like, okay, we've pushed into one place. And then what happens is anybody that's doing something on an Intel platform, they would have that code available in that one place. And key is they have the code. So if they needed to make modifications or if some little thing, you know, they added a different peripheral to their platform, they have the code available that they can then do the support and the changes themselves. But then it scales. So again, pushing things to the kernel once, it scales to hundreds of millions of people, right? right? So the opportunities for people then to take kernel and make product out of it and support it at Intel architecture is huge scale opportunity. Right, and really extends kind of the core Intel architecture a whole nother level if they can get in there to the kernel and make those changes. It does, and it also gives, you know, when you look at it too, if somebody's going to do something innovative, um, chances are they're going to give it back to the community, or if they come back into the community that we're working in and doing things as, as Intel um, engineers working out in the open, they might come back and you know give something very um, innovative, and then we can also take advantage of, one, helping them maybe to drive something that's going to drive Intel architecture, right. or we can just participate with them on their cool, innovative new idea. Yeah, and talk about that in terms of using community-based kind of innovation back inside of Intel that goes into some of the core products that you make. Because that's different than having your own people down, you know, working away on a project, pushing code, pushing pushing gold tapes back in the day, right? It's bringing the community in is very different. Much quicker, a lot of different directions it can go. Right. Um, you know, a couple ways to look at this is when I always say, if you're not out collaborating where the um, largest open source base is actually happening, if you're not at working with them, innovation is going to happen without you. And if you try to do something and not do it in the open way, if you're using open source software, you know, are you just going to be a one hit wonder and then everybody else is just going to sit there and innovate and progress again without you, right? right? right. So that can always happen. And then you also see other things. So, you know, containers is enormous, you know, buzzword. Even though the containers have been around for a little while, um, I think when Docker and then, you know, CoreOS with Rocket, and now there's the open container initiative that the Linux Foundation started. Um, I think when all this starts, you, you see, hey, there's new usages going on because the cloud has brought in new usages, and it's just like, what are people doing with this? Um, and you know, we look at containers and we're like, okay, we know the good and the bad at them, so we've kind of evaluated that intel, and then one of the things that we did, we said, you know what, we could probably take this usage that people are now using in the industry and do something, and we did something called Clear Containers. Okay. So it's part of the Clear Linux project, clearlinux.org, and we're using virtualization to bring a container usage that provides some of the security that you don't um, often get with normal container usages. Right, right. So again, taking advantage of, hey, look what's going out in the community, right? 
hey, that's kind of interesting. Maybe we could do it a different way. But we wouldn't know about it unless we put it out there and collaborated with right, people. Participated. So it's funny you talked about scale, 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 because yeah. the, the, you know one of the big topics in computing right now, obviously, is data centers, right? Everything is moving to the data center. You've got a little local app on your phone driven by mobile, but a lot of horsepower moving to data centers. You've got all the classic problems with compute and moving data, um, heat and cooling and this, that, and the other. But that said, it's going to continue to grow. So talk a bit about what Intel's doing in the data centers these days, how that kind of is a priority relative to, you know, before it was shipping PCs. Now, now shipping PCs are probably not at the top of the list. So a couple weeks ago, we announced a project and an initiative called Cloud for All. And really what Cloud for All is to enable people to use open software to do you know, tens of thousands of clouds. And one of the you know, big areas of investment that we're putting into this is into OpenStack. And we're starting an innovation center with Rackspace down in San Antonio. And it's going to be open. Um, the, the work that comes out of this is going to be definitely pushed toward the open source. So when you look at OpenStack and trying to make it, hey, how, are we, how can we make this more usable, installable? You know, um, <clears throat> when you look at the enterprise side of it, Intel is heavily involved in pretty much four working groups as part of the OpenStack Foundation. One of them is the enterprise readiness. So when you're talking about live migration, when you're talking about rolling upgrades, just and again, the installability of it, right? right. Um, we're involved in the telco working group, so meeting the needs and requirements of telco users of OpenStack. We're involved in the product working group, the, um, I think it's product management working group. So when you look at, hey, OpenStack is a collection of products or projects, um, what does that mean and what does it make, right? And so giving a little bit more focus into what these projects are actually making. And then we're also involved heavily into the diversity working group. And you know, I always say Intel did make a huge investment and an announcement last year into diversity. Um, but I always say what we really want to do here is provide inclusion. So you know, I don't want 20 people just like me running around. Right. I want to work with people, I want to work with other um, you know, geos, other genders, other companies that think differently and maybe challenge me in a different way, which is about bringing in inclusion and making people feel safe in the environment that they're working in. Um, but definitely OpenStack um, is something that we've put a lot of resource and investment in, and you're going to see a lot more from Intel in the coming months. Oh, good. So we're going to see you in uh, at OpenStack Silicon Valley next week? Um, not there, but um, there is the OpenStack Summit that will be in um, Tokyo in October. That's right, okay. Yeah. We were at the one in Vancouver and we were at the one in Portland before that. So we've been we've been involved in OpenStack all along. It's a great it's a great project. Right. So I would be remiss if I didn't, you know, at least touch on Moore's Law. It's it's the gift that keeps on giving. You know, the Intel I thirty two architecture just continues to be more than good enough and right. scalable and really the basis for a lot of these ongoing improvements. So I wonder if you can, you know, talk about really at the core, right? At the core it's I thirty two and driving now this this data center and cloud-based system, which at the end of the day, somebody, I saw a bumper sticker, the cloud just means it's somebody else's computer. It's still got to be driven by <laughs> compute, and how that just continues to really be at the core of delivering these data center solutions. Right, so um, when you look at the amount of feature-rich um, silicon that we deliver, it is really some of the foundation building blocks of what actually makes a, a, what I would call an open data center, right? Um, when you look at things that maybe we're doing with compression, um, you know, with vector rendering, those type of things. These things, when we enable them at the core from the hardware, so hardware features that get enabled up into the more operating system stack, and then they can get exposed at the upper layers. Um, we're also doing things where, you know, when you look at the different usages, you know, when you, when you look at what Intel Silicon actually provides, it's just like, hey, how can we take this and do something a little bit different, and how are people going to use it? Um, and you know, things going in the cloud are now really trending more into, hey, what's going on with networking? What's going on with storage? I mean, you know, a, a lot of the emphasis on, that's really been going on with cloud, you know, it's compute, 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 but what happens with compute and then you stick storage next to it and what are you going to do with the latency? So there are definitely a lot of um, different challenges and opportunities that we're still facing. Um, it's just going to be an exciting area to keep working in. Yeah, great time. Yeah. Well, uh, Maury Whalen, thanks for stopping by from Intel and it's good to see you. Great, Jeff. Thank you. All right, I'm it is. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. We are on the ground in Seattle, Washington at LinuxCon North America 2015.
See you next time.